Welcome to the February the 8th, 2000 taping of our history tape number 388. As we look back on the history of the city of Grand Prairie and some of the people that caused that history to happen and also they're continuing to make history today even though it is the year of 2000. And we're so pleased today as we continue celebrating Black History Month to have a very special gentleman that is a longtime resident of Grand Prairie, Texas, and we're just so pleased to welcome Mr. John Harris. Mr. Uh, Harris, welcome to the set. Be here. Wonderful. Now, Mr. Harris, uh, we're going to start out our interview, and we're going to bring you back, to, I mean, to the real okay. basics, kind of like this is your life. Mm -hmm. So would you look out into your camera and tell us really uh, something about Mr. Harris, his mother and father, and if you had brothers and sisters, we'd like for you to name them. And tell us a little bit about the beginnings uh, of Mr. John Harris, okay. where and when you were born. Okay, I was born in Middle Wells, Texas. Uh, my father was in the military there. He was stationed there in Middle Wells. And uh, I was born to uh, E. Toy and John Harris. And I have one sister named Lena, and I have a brother named Mark. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, your mother's maiden name. Uh, her, uh, Huntington. Oh. Huntington, yes. Yes, all mm -hmm. right. And uh, you were born in Mineral Wells, Mineral Wells and, yes. and your dad in the military, what did he do in the military? Well, he was a cook. He, wasn't that wonderful? He was a cook, yes. Oh, mm -hmm. you got to eat well Yes, then. I did. Oh, that mm -hmm. is just splendid. All right. And uh, growing up in Mineral Wells, Texas, um, where'd you go to school? Well I, well, I moved to Grand Prairie when I was three. All right. Yes, and I've been living in Grand Prairie for 53 years, so. Okay. I guess maybe about 33. All <laughs> right. And moving to Grand Prairie when you were three, well, I'm, I don't imagine you remember that magic move coming here to this no. wonderful city, but uh, what brought your uh, parents to Grand Prairie, Texas? Well, we had relatives here. You did? Yeah, we had relatives here. All right. You don't name drop any of your relatives uh, yes, here? Yes, Lula, Lula Joan. All right. Yes, and our daughter, uh, Janet Bush. All right. Yeah. Okay, and so uh, when uh, your dad and mom decided to move here, and you were three, uh, were your brothers, uh, your brother and your sister older or younger than? Yeah, my sister's older. Uh, yes. All right, she's the yes, she's, she's the, the older, older one. Yes, You're yes. the middle. I'm I'm the middle. Okay. Yes. And uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, my father, my mother was killed when I was about four years old on a trip to East Texas. Oh my. Uh, yes, and both parents are deceased. Uh -huh. And then my father later married Ezel. Smothers, you probably know a sister, Creole Oliver. Yes, of yeah, course. Yeah, Aunt Creola, yes. Oh, yes. Aunt Creola, she's important to everybody. She really is, she really is. Oh, everybody and in she, Grain Prairie knows that yeah, child. Yeah, she's a legend within us, so. She, she yes. certainly mm -hmm. is. Okay, and moving to Grain Prairie, well, where did you start to school then? At Dalworth? Uh, Dal at Dalworth Elementary School. All right, yes, going Dal to Dalworth, you were a pure dragon then, so tell us, tell me about uh, some of the early teachers that really affected your life, that really were important to your educational? Well, I remember my first grade teacher name was Bernice Simmons. And I guess Miss Simmons had an impact because that was my first encounter, you know, in public school. Yes. And uh, second grade, I had Miss Davis. Third grade, I had Miss Page. Fourth grade, I had Elsie Jackson, who, at that time, if you taught in, in Grand Prairie, you had to live in Grand Prairie. So all the teachers that lived in Dallas, they had to relocate to Grand Prairie, they wanted to remain, you know, teachers in the Dallas, you know, in Dallas school. All right. And uh, but one teacher had the most impact on me during my early years. I said my elementary school was uh, Lee Alice Daniel. Oh, the yes. late Lee Alice Daniel. Yes, uh, she was my fifth grade teacher. And at that time in my life, Miss Daniel imposed us, you know, caring for other people. Yes. She was a very uh, sensitive person. You know, she could read a story. I mean, we, we had a story. She would always read our fifth grade class. Last to come home, yes. and Miss Moore, I'm gonna say Miss Miss Daniel would cry. She had a class crying, and it was just. And I think every class she read that story to, it was the same. You know, it was us. Everyone in that classroom cried because of the way she presented that story. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. she was yes. really a sensitive lady. Yes, she and, was. Yes, and uh, David Daniel then was uh, David involved in the school while while you were going yes, there. Yes, he was the principal. Yes, he was the he principal. He was the principal. Did yes. you ever get called to the principal's yes, office? Yes, I did. Oh, yes, I did. My. And you know, you look you look back on those days. I think I was in the prison all at once. You know, something we had done. You know, when you're young, you know, you do things. And and Miss Daniel called us in, and 
And then we got the belt and give you what for? Uh, we at this time I don't know we we had a farm called Dave Farm, you know, and and those cows got loose, yes. and we were chasing the c cow, you know, during school time, and we were supposed to be in class. Oh mercy! And so we were reporting, so Miss Dane called us to the office, and you know that was that. That's yes, it. Yeah. All right. But you know, even though it was a form of punishment, but we look back on those days as, you know, he did it because he cared. You know, he wanted us to be prepared for yes. the next level in life, yes. That was some discipline that yes, you, was, we yes. really needed, didn't yes, we? Yes, yes. All right, yeah. and then uh, then on continuing uh, your education at Dalworth, were there other teachers or people, or, or do you have some good buddies in your class you'd like to remember and remember on this tape? Well, yes, I have uh, a classmate, Joe Jones, he now you know, resides in Colorado. All right. And Jane Fairman Griffith, I think he's out of state also. Uh -huh. uh, How did you let all your good buddies well, move out of state? Well, I don't know. You know, you know, when we were seniors, that's one ambition yeah. we had, you know, to move out of state. Yes. And I guess when I was in high school at Dalworth, we had four coaches, Coach Reed, Coach Grant, Coach Brown, and Coach Jackson. All right. And those were very visible role models at that time. Oh, they were. You know, during the younger days, you know, especially males, you need that role model. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we always looked up to Mr. Reed, Coach Grant, and those coaches, you know, in addition to classroom work, coaching on the basketball court or coaching on the football field, they still found that time to interact with us, you know, give us that, you know, that father away from home image. Oh, yes. you needed that, didn't yes. you? Yes. All right, when you were in high school at, at Dalworth, um, did you, uh, what sports did you play? Well, I played basketball, I was on a track team, and one of the first tennis players there at Dalworth. Well, yes. how wonderful. Yes. Oh, that was great. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, in athletics, you evidently did pretty good. Uh, yes. How about uh, your academics? Well, I was on, I graduated with honor. You graduated with honors? Yes. And uh, as you were in elementary and coming up the line, what did you find that were your favorite subjects and that you thought maybe you might want to study later on? Well, uh, I think it was Ms. Sally Moore's history class that I was in. Oh, right. And, you know, in, in, in talking about my, my high school days and teachers had an impact, I'd say Ms. Moore, Sally Moore. Sally Moore. Because mm -hmm. Ms. Moore really guided me, you know, throughout high school on into my college, you know, life, and was always there to call and, you know, to help me out at any time. And right today, you know, as, as an adult and, and a professional, you know, I still call Miss Moore when things happen in my life. Was Sound her out. Yes, Sound was a promotion or something I'd like to discuss with her, she's still available. Oh, yeah, so she was a counselor dad well, even before she became a counselor, you know, at Grand Prairie High. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, and you graduated in what year from Dalworth? 1961. 1961, all right. Um, are we going to hold up our picture? Yes, this is our class of 1961. Now hold that right in front of okay. your tie, and then maybe we can pick, okay, I hope maybe it's that'll pick yes. that up. Now look up there at the monitor now. There you're, yeah, that's now it. That's you're our getting 1961 it. graduating class. All right, can you point you out in that box? Okay, where am I? Okay, I think I'm third from the, third from the right. Third from yeah, the right. Third from the right. On the first, second, or third? Uh, row? the second row. Second in the middle row. Yes. Now, oh, okay. now there were 21 graduates, but there were only 19 pitchers. We had a couple of uh, classmates to miss the pitcher. Uh -huh. Yes, but there were 21 that graduated that 21 year. 21 graduated yes. from mm -hmm. Dalworth. Oh, yes. that is great. And then uh, when you graduated from Dalworth, what happened to Mr. John then? Well, I uh, attended Java Christian College on a partial, you know, basketball yeah. scholarship. You know, Ms. Moore was instrumental in, you know, getting for me. Uh, and at Jarvis, I received my degree in business administration and a double minor in PE and uh, economics. And also, while I was at Jarvis, you know, I played on a tennis team. Even though I went on a, on a basketball scholarship, somehow when I got there, uh, I know you're familiar with the uh, Little Nance Jane Park. Yes, yes. Yeah, Little Nance was my, was my close friend. Yes. And you know he died on the basketball court during one of our basketball district playoff game. I heard that and, and, yes. and went to the uh, rededication of yes, the park rededication recently. Yes, rededication of that mm -hmm. park. And somehow when, uh, after Lynn's death and after, after I graduated from high school, I didn't have that interest for basketball like I always you know, yes. thought I would have when I got to college. So I talked with the coaches there at Jarvis Christian College and they saw let me swing over to tennis. All right. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was something just pretty new uh, uh, back in those years. Yes. yes. All mm -hmm. right. And yes. playing on the tennis team um, at Jarvis, 
Um, did you do any uh, state or regional? Well, or? what we did, we, we, we were in the Gulf Coast Conference there at Gulf Java Coast. Christian College right. here, Zion. And we did pretty well in our conference. Yeah. Never a championship, we did quite well. Yes. Oh, that is mm -hmm. wonderful. All right, and uh, ending up with a business, PE, and economic degree, mm -hmm. or what, uh, what did you want to be? Well, uh, at that time, you already know, looked at the big corporation, nine to five, the businessman type job. All right. And so when, when I graduated from college, I was drafted into the military. Okay. Yeah, and I was uh, stationed at Fort Hood. And from Fort Hood, I went to serve uh, in Vietnam. And I think when I served in Vietnam, that sort of changed my perspective of life. Yes. Because while, you know, at Vietnam, I saw children there, they were so deprived of things that we take for granted here in the United States. Yes. You know, those children had no Christmas. They had no, no suitable schools to attend. Mm -hmm. You know, that was just war, gunfire, bomb, you know, going off all oh. around them. Yeah. And so when I came back uh, out of the military, that was a head start program established in, in, in the Dalwood community. All right. And my sister was a teacher there at that school. And uh, she asked me to come down. I said, uh, why don't you come down to the school and to the Head Start Center and volunteer? I said, what can I do in the Head Start Center, volunteer? Yeah. So you can read stories to the children. Yes. I said, read stories to the children. I said, no, that's, that's not me. And so she finally got me there. Yes. And Head Start as a volunteer. And once I got there, I sort of related my experience in Vietnam to those children. Yes. If those children in Vietnam had an impact on my life like, like that, then the children here in in the state and in my community, you know, I can open up to them. Mm -hmm. And after volunteering in, in the Dalworth Head Start, I became the center director there at Dalworth Head Start, and that was in 1970. All right, life's got to get that down. That 1970, 1970 Head Start there in Dalworth. Yes, and I'm presently part of Dallas Head Start. And I will mark my 30th year in, in uh, April. All right. Yeah. Now, in the military, where did you train? Uh, at Fort Hood? I trained at Fort Hood. I All trained the way? there. I trained six weeks there, what we call basic training. And then I trained six weeks, what we call advanced training, because, you know, I was getting ready to go overseas. All right. And yes. in what arena did you serve in the military mm -hmm. in Vietnam? Well, when I uh, got out of basic training, I was in the infantry. You were in the infantry. The infantry. Yes. That's yes. a mean assignment. Yeah, it was a mean assignment. Now, I had a charge to go to Office of Candidate School. Yeah. But I didn't want to take that route at that time because I didn't want to make a career out of the military. You didn't want to stay, did No, you? I didn't want to stay. Yes. Yes. And uh, in certain in Vietnam, I became ill. And uh, I had to be close to a, a camp or where I get, you know, uh, medical attention if I needed. And uh -huh. so uh, I was reassigned to the island of Okinawa. Okay. And so I spent the remainder of my military uh, stay in, in Okinawa, where I served as a personnel specialist. Okay, yeah. and when you're a personnel specialist, what do you do? Well, we deal with, uh, with, uh, with soldier records, you know, like soldiers oh, yes. getting discharged, uh, yeah. they have a promotion within the range. Office work. Yes, yeah, office work, yes. Yes, oh, mm -hmm. that is really yeah. great. Well, you got a lot of good experience doing that. Yes. And, mm -hmm. oh, that is yeah. wonderful. That yeah. was almost like a college education Yeah, there. it was. It was an experience, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Then when you came back out of the military and were discharged, where'd you go, John? Well, uh, like I said, when I came out of the military, I. You know, I was sort of faced yeah. in limbo what I really wanted and to do. And then that's when you got in the Head Start program? Yeah, when I program. got in Head Start, yes. Right. And, and you said your sister? Yeah, she was a teacher in Head Start. She was the teacher yeah, there. she was a teacher there. Let's give her, her name one more time. Uh, Lena Lord. All right. Lena Lord, yeah, that's All my right. oldest sister. All right, yeah. and is she still here? Yeah, she's still, she's in Arlington, she stays in Arlington now. In Arlington, yeah. uh-huh. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to proselyte her back, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. She belongs yeah. back in our area in yeah. Grand Prairie, Texas. Mm -hmm. All right, and then... Uh, uh, when you uh, started working as a volunteer at Head Start, did you ever dream that you would become the head honcho of the Grand Prairie Head Start, much mm. less no, I, I the really title didn't. that you now carry is the site manager, yeah, the, and is that for all of Dallas County? No, that's just for the, for the uh, location in Pleasant Grove. In probably. Pleasant yeah. Grove, where yeah. you are. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, when I, when I was employed in Head Start in 1970, all right. you know, I moved all the way up to the assistant director of Head Start. And that was like the second highest position in Dallas. And our Dallas Center was sort of going through some transition yes, period. Yes, mm -hmm. I, and you know, there were a lot of directors there at Dallas, you know, coming from outside. And so I went to our, you know, executive director. I said, well, I'm from Grand Prairie. I know the city government. I know the school district. I know the city council. Let me go back out there and sort of bring the center back online to be productive. 
And so I came back out and I been in, you know, I what was called out in the field ever since. Yes. yes. You know, I, I you know, I was not demoted. You know, I just just a choice I the choice I that you yes, wanted. I, All yeah. right. Uh, working with Head Start, um, I know that you have a brand new beautiful site mm -hmm. over in the Kroger complex. Right, right. And I've recently uh, been by there for your rededication mm -hmm. of that. Uh, are you over that site no. or you're over the Pleasant no. Grove site only? It's just a Pleasant Grove site only. Now, like in Dallas Head Start, we have about 28 sites. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have two here in Grand Prairie yeah, now. Yeah, the Burbank Head Start and the uh, Grand Prairie Head Start. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. and the Burbank Head Start is in the church that I attend, right. so right. Uh, that is a wonderful. Yeah. That's so wonderful yeah. for that yeah. arena. Yeah, it is really yeah, you know, great. I think uh, Head Start is. It's sort of, I think we focus me, you know, of what I want to do. Even though you know, I probably could have gone into the business arena and you know made yeah. more money. Mm -hmm. But you see so many rewards and so much impact mm -hmm. you had when Children in Head Start. Now, like I started in 1970, and it's 2000. Yes. You know, I saw a lot of kids go through Head Start. Yes, you did. Graduate high school, graduate college. You know, so, you know, you see all this, and kids come back and say, you know, you had an impact on my life. I remember when you, when you used to walk out in your three-piece suit, and I wanted to be so much like you. you know, yes. You know, uh -huh. these kind of things. You were a role just, model yes, for a lot yeah. of them. And so that's what really keep you going when you work for a program like Head Start when you deal with the social aspect of, you know, family life and this type of thing, yes. And do you still live in Grand Prairie, Texas? Yeah, I still live in Grand Prairie. All right, now, yeah. uh, we've already used up about 15 minutes of this. We haven't talked about those two boys. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. going to have to name your two sons and anything you want to say about your little family. Okay, uh, you know, when I, I married a local young lady, Ernestine, and, you know, we later separated, which I don't, you know, I talked about because I think we can write a book about separation because we did so. It's a thing that we did together, and then yes. continue to raise our boys as a team and as a unit. That's great. Uh, yeah, so we still remain friends and supportive one another. And from that that marriage, we had two sons. Uh, we had Malcolm, which is our oldest son. He's uh, he's 28 now. He lives in Illinois. All right. What does Malcolm do? Uh, he's an office. He's office manager. Office yeah. manager. Yeah, he went to Grand Prairie High. And okay, GP yeah. High. I hope this picture, you can see this picture. This is Malcolm. Okay. Uh, he graduated in 1991 at Grand Prairie High. All right. And then he attended junior college here in Texas. He went a year at Navarro. All right. Played basketball there. Then he played a year at Eastfield. And okay. then when Eastfield went to New York for the national tournament, yeah. of course, from Iowa, saw him. And so... He, he played his, his last two years in Iowa and graduated with a degree in accounting. Okay, yes. in accounting. Oh, yes. that is a tough one. And then my youngest son, okay. uh, Iran. This is this is Iran. He graduated in, in Grand Prairie High in 1993. Okay. I've got to get that down. Yeah. And uh, Iran graduated uh, in 1993. And then where did he go? He earned a scholarship to SMU. He well, did he graduate from Grand Prairie High School? Yes, yes he graduated from both Grand Prairie. Both of your boys were gophers? Yeah, both were gophers. And you were a Dalworth Dragon? Dalworth Dragon. Oh, yeah, Dalworth my, Dalworth my, Dragon. my. Okay. And Iran uh, finally graduated from Grand Prairie High School and then went to SMU, went to SMU and SMU. has done what? Well, he graduated in 1997. You know, he went there on a basketball scholarship. And you know he graduated on time, and you know I, I'm very proud of that because a lot of time when you go to, to college on a, on a scholarship, you know a lot of people look at the athletic yeah. aspect of it. But I always you know told them once you go to college, even though basketball got you there, once you get there, your education is most important. Mm -hmm. And you know both graduated, you know, and I told them I say, you know once you graduate from college, get your degree. I don't care if you bounce another basketball. That's you know, it. That, that's it, you know, but I'm not, like my oldest son, Malcolm, he did try for the CBA team uh, in, in Detroit, Michigan. And at that time, I think he said they were only looking for two players. This is like a semi-pro, you know, basketball yeah. team. And so he said at that time they were only looking for two players. And I think that about 50 guys was trying out. Yeah. And so when he called and told me that, you know, he didn't, he didn't make the team, you know, he wasn't disappointed. Yes. He said, well, they were looking for only two players, and I just wasn't one of the ones he, they were looking for. Yes. And so he started circulating his uh, resume around the Chicago area, and so he became employed there. He's been there ever since. And loves it. And loved it, yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, what, what did 
uh, Iran study at SMU? He studied psychology. Psychology. psychology yeah. Oh, uh -huh. he may be psychoanalyzing yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, Oh, isn't that yeah, great? Yeah, so uh, when I talk about my son, uh, that's probably, you know, the, mm -hmm. the well, joy of my life, yes, yeah. Now, yeah. Iran was supposed to be on the show today. Yes. He was, but he has a brand new job. Yeah, he had started a new job, and, you know, and it was sort of a innovation <coughs> in, as far as uh, yes. where he was, and he couldn't afford to take off. But uh, uh, that's why I bought some of the pictures here to show. All right. And also, you know, I have, I have a grandson. And oh, we better show that. Yeah, this is grandson. This is, this is Jalen. Uh, you know, he, he, belo he belongs to Malcolm? No, Iran. Iran. Yeah, Iran, Iran yeah. Okay. Yeah. Isn't he precious? Yeah. And where is he and where does he go to school? Okay, Jalen is only uh, is, is 17 months. 17 yeah. months? Well, yeah. he looks like a... Yeah, he's 17 months there. Oh, what a big boy. Yeah. Isn't he a, just a dandy? Yeah. Well, well what see, do you... uh, Iran is 6'4". Is All right. And his mother is 6'1". Mm -hmm. She's a basketball player at SMU now. Just yeah. last senior at, at SMU. All right. And so he had no choice of being a, a big baby. Oh, yeah. that is great. And one more time, his name? Uh, Jalen. Jalen Cole Harris. J-A-Y-L-O-N. J-J-L-E-N. Jalen. Jalen. Yes, yes. Oh, that is great. And so uh, in addition to uh, Malcolm Iran, you know, that's the cream of the crop there. That yeah, that's is. That sums it all up. Yeah, wh yeah. what are you going to do with him? i tell you what, he, he knows now how to manipulate Grandpa because he can just about get me to do anything he wants me to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and does he live in Dallas? Lives in Dallas, yes. Lives in yes. Dallas. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to have to proselyte him back. Oh, yeah. To he, Grand he, may, he may look forward to being a gopher, too. So. Yes, oh, yeah. that is wonderful. All right, uh, we found out a little bit about your wonderful family mm -hmm. and especially your grandson, mm -hmm. and I didn't know about him. Oh, yes, that's. Oh, that is really great. Yeah. Now, Going to work for Head Start and working your way through all of the different chairs and in the different arenas, do you still live in Grand Prairie and commute to Pleasant Grove Yes, Grove I still every live day? in Grand Prairie and commute. And, you know, I <laughs> thought about one time moving closer to my job, but somehow my no. roots are here and I, I can't you go. Can't, you can't I can't go, Prairie. yes, you know. Grand Prairie is a city that, I don't know, it's something special. You know, it's always been special. Even mm -hmm. back in the 50s and 60s when I was growing up as a teenager, you know always a special place. Now, working for Head Start, driving back and forth, uh, what does John Harris do with his spare time, your hobbies or anything yeah. that you like to do, your church, your lodge or anything? Yeah, I'd well, like my to hobbies know. now, a lot, of, a lot of the children that went through Head Start, uh, you know, in high school and I go to some of that basketball game, then I guess that's where I reward myself now. I say uh, to my <laughs> son, I reward myself. I think I was a pretty good dad, you know. And, yes. And I just really go and enjoy sports, sports. sport events, my you know now, and uh, enjoy myself. That's good. You know, if, if there's a volleyball game, I go to South Grand Prairie, Grand Prairie. So I, I just enjoy going, going now, enjoying without my sons competing. All right. Uh, if uh, you were picked as the most outstanding role model at a a head start, why would you say that they picked you particularly? Because I am dedicated to what I'm doing. Yes. And if you're not a dedicated person, if you don't believe in what you're doing, and if you're not willing to make sacrifices for those families that we serve, you know, head start is no place for you. Well now, mm -hmm. there are many in our viewing audience uh, that probably have never been inside of a head start facility. Also, they probably never had boys or girls uh, that were eligible yeah. to go. Mm -hmm. What would you say to young parents that are just starting out with boys and girls that may have a need for Head Start mm -hmm. and they don't even know about you? Why don't you look out into your camera and tell them what a wonderful opportunity yeah. it is and how to get in touch with yeah, you? Head Start, like I say, you know, it's a wonderful program. I've been in 30 years, so I've been in 30 years for you know, just wasting time. But if you're a young parent or you have a child between the age of three and a half to five, uh, you can, if you can look in the, your local phone directory, we are listed there on the Head Start. So just go by and make application. It's a wonderful program. Call and find out. Yeah, call and find and, out. And do yes. you take single parent? Single family? parent, yeah. It's based on family income and, and the number in the family. Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, the age limit, uh, the minimum is three. It's three and a half. Three and a half. The public okay. school age, like, like kindergarten. Like kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then a Head Start, if I had a child that was three and a half and eligible to go, and I sent them to Head Start, 
what time in the morning would I need to get them there, and what would they do that day? Well, Head Start try to accommodate the working parent. All right. You know, parents that work and train in school. So the facility opens at 7 o'clock in the morning, and we close at 5.30. Mm -hmm. So, you know, most people go to work between 7 and 8 and get off between 5 and 5.30. 5 so mm -hmm. we're there to accommodate, you know, the working parents. What, yeah. do, what, uh, what uh, makes uh, the day for a Head Start child when they go in there? I know they have some real qualified mm -hmm. teachers yeah. because I've been in our yeah. Head Start. But what would be a day like for a, for a young person, say, that's five years old? Yeah, well, we say we serve uh, two-thirds of the child nutrition meal that has done. We serve breakfast, we serve lunch, and then we serve the PM snack. All right. And so once the child comes in at 7 o'clock, breakfast serve from 7 to 8.30, and uh, 8.30 to 9, it's sort of like clean up transition, get ready All for right. the, you know, the learning center activity time in the control. Right. And it's really a full day that, you know, the teacher has a lesson plan she goes by. Do they take a nap? Yes, they take a nap from 12.30 to 2.30. Oh, isn't yeah. that great? Right. Oh, that is yeah. really wonderful. It, that's just a wonderful day for, yeah. a, for a young person. It really is, because we try to plan our day to enhance growth and development within the child. Mm -hmm. and, and you teach yeah. uh, English as a second language and Spanish as a second language, or how do you handle that? Well, we have, we have uh, ES, ESL class for our parents. For parents. But if a child come in that can't speak English, you know, once that child there in Head Start, you know, we have bilingual teachers, you know, within, yes. the, uh -huh. within the system. So once that child come in to Head Start, you doesn't know. Doesn't take no, long, does yeah, it? Yeah, it doesn't take long. No. Okay. But we do have ESL class for the parents. For the parents. Yes. All right. We have uh, only a minute and a half left on our interview. Oh, Is boy, there anything you want to say to Grand Prairie, Texas? or to uh, yeah. Dalworth Dragons or to the city, it's your time. Well, I don't, you know, this 30 minutes with, you know, I was wondering how can we talk for 30 minutes? I had no idea it had gone by so fast. Yes. Yeah, but I'd just like to say to Grand Prairie and, and all that, you know, we have a city that we can be proud of, but we all need to get together and work as a team. You know, we have problems within our community, we have problems within our city. The school district can't do it alone, the church can't do it alone, parents can't do it alone. We help to bind together to make an effort to rid ourselves of what's going on in our communities. That's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, Mr. John Harris, it's been a delight interviewing oh, you. Oh, it's been a pleasure. And yes. it, was so, it was so exciting yeah. that I got to meet you yeah. at the open house for the Head Start yeah. and, and got a clue on your life and how much time that you had spent yeah. with boys and girls and, and had spent in the benefit of Grand Prairie and lived in our city for okay. so long. Thank you for Thank you. being our candidate for history number 388. Oh, it was mm -hmm. a delight having you for Good interview. To be here. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do. And would you hold that oh, up yes. right up there yeah, the in front of there? Right yes. Yeah.